is kind of expressed in things that data people are familiar with, the OAS model and, and such like, how you make data reusable, and the, the economic impacts, the economic benefits. And Mark talked about RDA, but I'm sure that the people that are working for data centers in this room are very much thinking about it. Um, I think some of you talked about your, you know, the generative impact of the data, but perhaps you could, you could say a little more about that theme and how your institutional project or activity is thinking about that issue and how you're building relationships to that, that help the data achieve that benefit. Go ahead, Well, I mean, I'll just say that, I mean, I think one of the whole points of Integrating social and natural science data is to have a take advantage of the generative impact of putting you know, data that was collected for separate disciplinary reasons together, uh, and that in fact, uh, well, let's tell an anecdote. One of the one of the uh, projects I worked on about ten years ago was for the World Bank, and uh, we did this great uh, assessment of hazard risk across. In the research field, hazards are all studied by hydrologists or climatologists or earthquake people, and they all do hazard analysis differently. And so, but the user community, they want to know which hazards work. And of course, every discipline thinks their hazards work in the right order. Uh, and more importantly, the economists who worry about the costs of hazards, uh, like at the bank. They only think in terms of national level aggregate. They don't, you know, I mean, they might think of that as pretty, but in fact, their world is national economic statistics. So we had this project that created great maps and everything, but the thing the economists liked was the table at the back that did a very crude uh, aggregation to the national level. The economists loved it. So to make yourself relevant, to have value to audiences, you, the scientists have to actually deliver data information to the units of analysis and decision makers. You can't make that jump. You can't go from great visualizations in 3D into something that means something in the, in, to the user, which may be a visualization, but it might also be things aggregated to the right. Um, you know, you're missing this opportunity to have. You know, so that's Well, I can say from our um, experience, we operate, operate like many of you in different scales. So what we've uh, tried to do or our approach is one of the most uh, profitable area in geology is mining. Right? So we are focusing primarily to get funds from the mining uh, industry. So. We are in collision here with data providers that don't want to release the full de uh, detailed data uh, with the demands of the mining industry who wants the de uh, detailed data. So what we uh, managed to do is or try to, to sort of give the industry a candy, uh, a coarse scale data that indicates areas potential mineralization, and that for that, uh, that data for governments to give away it's not a problem because they know they will attract uh, the industry. And once they do that, one, once they realize that with a certain level of, of the data, they can attract additional um, economic income to their country, they also profit from that. So. Uh, Maybe our, our case is specific when we talk about different different scales of the data uh, for attracting industry. Anyhow, when, if you if you can find that equilibrium between the the availability of the data and its real economic um, impact that goes directly to a specific data provider, then you can you can have a, a sustainable business case for the future. Yeah. Um, just, just a comment 
a little bit on that. I think one of the one of the issues, what you're really talking about there is that different groups will want to give away different amounts of data. So there are some groups that are actually looking at the sort of quid pro quo model, which says you get the kind of data you're willing to contribute. So we know mining companies have their own information. They would get the level of data that is equivalent to what they would contribute to this service. And it's the same in terms of uh, scientists. You know, you're accessing a large research network. If you put all your data in there, then you have access to all the data. So I wonder whether you have any, uh, any of you have any comments about this as a model for data sharing. Can I just uh, quickly reply to that? Well, actually, we thought of the same um, concept also in the scientific domain. That's why I mentioned that very quickly. We want to publish not only scientific papers, but also the raw data that scientists collect. And many times, this raw data is just left in the drawers and never, never used. So by stimulating scientists to share their, their raw data, uh, not only they will gain some maybe recognition, but they could also access then the raw data that somebody else collects. And it's a win-win situation for everybody. Uh, although I would say still we are facing some challenges here because many times, at least in geology, scientists are very much locked in silences. So it's a long way. I can give maybe one sort of similar example. Um, so uh, oil companies also have a keen interest in sea ice data because it's the sea ice we see today because of the prospect of drilling in the Arctic. Um, and they want very localized data, not just of course for more sensing data. And where it, and they and they're also collecting a lot of data, um, which they don't share. Um, but it, there have been some good examples of sort of those sort of quid pro quo relationships being developed where a sea ice researcher um, provides expertise, you know, the data is already open, but they provide the expertise to how to interpret the data, what the data mean, what the uncertainties are, and so forth, and in return get access to the welcome data and under the proviso that they're able to in return share. It. But it's very, very of the moment sort of negotiated as to how it I think that's an excellent note to close on. Thank you very right. much today. See you later.